Hi, I'm Helen Vasey, Assistant Keeper of History at Discovery Museum. In our new exhibition, The Female Form Through Time, I've been exploring the silhouette and looking at the ever-changing fashions that influence the female body shape. Today we're in our costume store and I'm going to be showing you some Victorian underwear and explaining how popular shapes were created. Here we have a chemise and some drawers, which, along with a petticoat, would have been worn under a corset. Women started to wear drawers from the beginning of the 19th century. These date to 1860 and are made of linen. Chemises were worn next to the skin, under the corset. They were fairly plain and often made of cotton or linen. This one dates to 1860s and is made of linen. This corset dates to the 1860s and is the only one we have in the collection from the Victorian period. Women have been wearing corset type garments since the 16th century. The purpose was to shape the hips, waist and bust according to the latest trends. This one laces at the back and is fastened at the front with metal eyelets, which started to be used in the late 1820s. It has metal boning, which creates a smooth line as well as reducing the size of the waist. Camisoles were worn over the corset to smooth the bumps of the fastenings and to prevent the corset from accidental view. They first appeared in the 1840s. This one dates to the 1880s and is made of cotton. In the early Victorian period, women wore large bell-shaped skirts. These were held up with several layers of stiff petticoats. They were called crinolines and could be very hot and uncomfortable for women to wear. These were then replaced with the cage crinoline, which was invented in 1856. These two date to the 1860s. They were made up of metal hoops joined together with stiff fabric. They were much lighter and more comfortable to wear. From the mid 1860s, bell-shaped skirts went out of fashion. The emphasis of the skirt moved to the back and so the shape of the crinoline changed. It became flat-fronted and protruded at the rear. A new type of garment was produced called a crinolette. This was open at the front, but created a frame for the back of the dress to sit on. This crinolette dates to 1870. It has 13 metal hoops joined together with linen tape and is fastened around the waist with cotton ties. Crinolettes were gradually replaced by padding called bustles, made of cotton or horsehair, to create this exaggerated shape. Some were attached to the dress, others were attached to a tape and tied around the waist. In the mid-1870s, the princess line dress was invented. This involved long vertical seams and darts, which meant that waist seams were no longer needed. This closely fitted dress required a different type of undergarment, and so combinations were invented. As the name suggests, they combined a chemise and some drawers together to form one item, which was less bulky. Here we have some combinations from the 1890s. They are made of cotton. Corsets would still have been worn over the top, but the shape had slightly extended to include more of the hips. 